Hello everyone, thank you so much for turning on my channel and watching this video. We are watching ghost stories and I found some uh, part 1 through 3 videos we're going to start with today. I haven't watched them yet, but we're going to get started with these and... I have my heater on, so I hope it doesn't cause any issues. So let's get started with these videos. Paranormal experience, turning from a skeptic to a believer. So when I first left home and moved out on my own with my boyfriend, I moved into a house that to this day still kind of freaks me out to talk about. Um, I don't talk about this place very much with people, so probably even a lot of my friends don't know any of this. Um, we moved into this little tiny adobe. It had only been built, like, I think five years before, so it wasn't old or anything like that. Um, this place was really messed up, and I started figuring that out, like, within 72 hours of moving in, that something was really wrong here. Um, I remember... The second night we were there, I was home alone cooking dinner. My boyfriend hadn't got home from work yet. Um, and I'm standing at my stove and I just get this feeling that somebody is watching me in a very negative way. Like as if somebody is standing there right behind me just staring holes through my back. And I remember getting completely covered from head to toe in chills. And you have to understand, like I'm not a person that gets freaked out being home alone. Like I like my space, I like being alone, I like quiet. This was totally out of character for me to get like this. And I was so freaked out and I could not shake the feeling. And then a day or two later, I had this big, heavy glass vase sitting in my windowsill. And again, this was an Adobe house. And if you've ever been in Adobe, you know that they have like two feet oh, thick walls, like big, me. thick walls. And um, this vase was sitting in the windowsill and I watched this thing fly out, not fall over, fly out, shatter on my tile floor, and it shattered so hard that I actually found glass shards that had like nicked the walls. It was crazy. And again, I was there home alone, and this was broad daylight when this happened. So then, a couple of nights later, I woke up in the middle of the night and saw a free-floating gray mist at the foot of my bed, and I was not dreaming. I wasn't having sleep paralysis like I was fully cognitive fully awake watching this thing and it just stayed there until finally I looked away because I was so freaked out I just pulled the covers over my head and tried to forget that I saw it then I found out that my boyfriend was having night terrors about a demon that lived in the air vents in the ceiling that was trying to attack him but I had already been having dreams about this same demon trying to attack both of us, but specifically him. And I just hadn't told him because I it was really freaking me out. And we also had numerous friends uh, see like shadow figures like at parties. Uh, we'd have people come up to us and just tell us like they felt really weird and they needed to leave. This place was crazy. Hey everybody, this is part two to my last video about what turned me from a paranormal skeptic to a believer. First of all, I wanna thank you guys so much. I had no idea that video was gonna blow up the way it did. Um, so thank you for showing so much enthusiasm about my ghost stories. I'm just gonna dive right in because there's still so much for me to cover about this place and I might even need to do a part three. Um, so on top of everything I mentioned that we witnessed in this house in the first video, um, we also had things happen like as soon as we turn off the lights at night to go to bed, we would start hearing knocking in the walls, we would start hearing things moving in our kitchen, like things sliding across the countertop or uh, silverware being moved like very carefully, almost like something was intentionally trying to move something without being loud. It was just really freaky stuff. And like, as soon as we'd turn on a light, it would stop. And I don't believe that this was mice or rats or anything like that because we never found traces of mice or rats in that house ever the entire time we lived there. And it was just too smart. Like, it almost seemed like something was intentionally trying to mess with us. Um, one of the other things that I had happen all the time, and I 
think my boyfriend did too. I'm not with him anymore, so I can't ask him specifically if he experienced this, but uh, we both had cell phone problems the whole time we lived there. Like my phone was brand new, it was an iPhone, and it would just light up by itself from across the room when like nobody was touching it, no one was near it. Um, I had a boom box that would like turn on by itself and turn off by itself. Um, and then we also had, you know, the classic like lights flickering and shit like that. Um, this place was just weird and we lived there for a year. So as time went on, as we got more settled, it's like this entity or whatever it was got more comfortable with us and it started to get more aggressive. And at that point I was like, okay, we need to do something about this. Like we need to bring in somebody and figure out or try to figure out what's going on here. So I had a Tai Chi instructor who was super new age. Um, she was into like spirituality and all that kind of stuff. And she had a sister in Texas. And we're not in Texas. So she was, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of miles away from us that she believed was a psychic. And she said, can I have my sister do a reading on your house? And I'm like, I guess like, you know, I was skeptical at this time. You have to remember that I wasn't really on board with all that. And so reluctantly, I was like, yeah, okay, you can have her do a reading or whatever. And so she did. And what she found out was very shocking, but also very reassuring to us. Okay, guys, this is my last video. And I'm gonna have to make this really quick because there's still a lot to cover. Okay, so we had the psychic do the reading on the house. And um, this was done over the phone, not in person. But I knew she was the real deal because she was like explaining in great detail the layout of our house and like where we had our personal belongings and stuff. So I knew she was legit. And about five minutes into the conversation, she was like, yeah, you guys have a problem. There is a portal under your dresser next to your bed that's letting entities in and out 24 seven. You need to take this very seriously. So she gave us, you know, a list of things we could do to combat it, which of course were a lot of things we were already doing, like saying prayers, using holy water, using sage. And like it, you could tell it was kind of like keeping whatever this was at bay for a while. But then a few months after the psychic did the reading, my boyfriend had another one of his night terrors and it was the worst he'd ever had. Uh, it woke us up at 3.30 in the morning or he woke me up from this dream and I woke him up because I knew he was not okay. And um, the feeling in the house was like nothing I've ever experienced and I hope I never experience again. It scared the shit out of me and it scared the shit out of him. And so in the middle of the night, we are so terrified of what we're feeling in this house and the dream that he had about being attacked by this entity that we just ran outside in our pajamas. It's October. We live in the mountains. It's freezing cold. And we spent the rest of the night in my car. And from that night on, my whole demeanor kind of changed towards this entity. I was like, Whatever this is, is a bully and I do not want to be bullied and I will not be bullied by this thing. And I wasn't. So we stayed there another six months and the only reason we moved is because they raised our rent a lot. And this was eight years ago. So it's like affordable housing was still a reasonable thing. Um, but anyway, they raised our rent. So we decided to move. But before we did, I also found a huge circle up on the hillside behind our house made out of stone that was about 20 feet across and it had four big stones on it that lined up perfectly with north south east and west so when I discovered this I was like okay this lines up with the elemental directions which is witchcraft which right off the top I don't have a problem with witchcraft I dabble in it myself but it's all about your intention so right away I was like who built this what was their intention behind it? So the day that we moved out, I asked our property manager, I said, do you know anything about the owner? And she said, yes, she was a practicing shaman. She built the house and she died in it. And suddenly everything, everything made sense. So that was a pretty good story, actually. Um, I'm glad that I clicked on those to get started with for the video. Uh, I hope you guys like that too. You well, it's hear this guy. Stories about black-eyed kids, but have you ever heard of somebody who actually let them in? 
Here's the story of a couple who actually let them in, what happened while they were there, and the aftermath. Paul and Brenda lived in a small town on a dirt road deep in the country. It had been snowing for several hours and Brenda wasn't surprised when she heard a bang on her door at 2 o'clock in the morning. Living out in the sticks like they did, this happened quite often. Someone's car would break down and they would go knock on their door. As she peered out through the curtains, she noticed that her motion lights had turned on. And she could see a pair of footprints leading up to her house from the road. And there was no sign of any cars on the road in front of their home. She could, however, make out two figures standing at her front door. The banging continued as she woke up her husband, Paul. Paul got dressed quickly and answered the door with Brenda standing behind him. On the porch stood two small children, a boy and a girl, both around eight years old. Brenda noticed that they were not dressed for winter weather, and normally her first instinct would be to rush them in the house to get them warmed up. But this time she felt a strong hesitation. There was something off about these kids. Their haircuts were strange and out of fashion. The boy had a bit of an outdated bowl cut, and the girl had long hair with short, blunt bangs. Their clothes also seemed to be unfashionable for the time, and they wouldn't make eye contact with the couple. But because it was so cold outside, they let them in anyway. Paul let them in while Brenda rushed off to the kitchen to make hot cocoa for the children. She was listening to Paul's conversation with the children while he asked them about their parents. Our parents will be here soon, said in a bit of a sing-song voice. The girl's voice gave Brenda the creeps, even from the other room. Paul asked what happened to the car breakdown. Our parents will be here soon, she said as her and her brother sat down on the sofa across from him on his favorite chair. She heard him ask, was there an accident? Again, the little girl said, our parents will be here soon. Brenda felt very uneasy about the kids' appearance, their behavior, their strange answers, and something else she couldn't quite figure out. As she was busy making the hot cocoa, she realized that her three cats were nowhere to be seen, which was odd because they normally have to chase them away from new guests. Only their one cat named Percival stood there and watched the children. His fur was raised along his spine, and his tail was poofed out twice his size, pointing down. He hissed at the children and stiffly walked backwards out of their sight. Walking back in with the cocoa, she noticed Paul was sitting there obviously in pain. Watch my next video for the rest of the story. This is why you don't let black eyed kids into your home. Part two. We left off with Brenda and Paul letting the two children into their home while they sat on the couch and Brenda was making hot cocoa for them in the kitchen. She came in, noticed that his hands were being held over his face and he was obviously in pain. Here we go. She quickly set down the cups in front of the children and knelt down by Paul. He said to her, I'm dizzy, that's all. As she turned toward the children, they finally made eye contact with them. The children's eyes were black as night. Almost that the children sensed the jig was up. The girl stood up, pulling her brother up with her. We need to use the bathroom, said in almost the same sing-song voice. Terrified, Brenda was still kneeling down by Paul. She pointed towards the bathroom through the hallway. As the children walked past her, she looked into Paul's face. She could tell that he had seen their eyes as well. Just then, she noticed Paul's nose started to bleed profusely. It's weird because he's never had a nosebleed in his entire life. Brenda ran into the kitchen to get some tissues. Just then, the power went out, casting them into complete darkness, the type of darkness that only people from the country are familiar with. In the dark, Brenda sensed movement and turned around and noticed the children were standing behind her in the doorway. She only noticed them for an instant while a car pulled into the driveway, casting their silhouette. She saw them standing side by side, holding hands and staring at her. She was overtaken with fear and was frozen in place. Just then, the girl said, our parents are here. Then the two black eyed children walked past Brenda out the front door, leaving it gaping open. Brenda found her way to Paul and they both rushed to the front window. Because of the headlights from the sedan idling in their driveway, they were able to see the children out in front of their home. They also saw two very tall men standing out in front of the car in dark suits. As the children approached the car, the men opened the back doors for them to get in. The couple couldn't do anything but watch them all get into the sedan and drive off into the cold, snowy night. The family then went through hell for the next few months afterwards. Three of their cats went missing. Percival, the one that hissed at the children, was found dead laying on the floor in the kitchen. Paul developed regular, intense nosebleeds. Brenda also developed nosebleeds. And both developed dizzy spells on and off for months. 
Paul develops skin cancer, even though he's never spent much time in the sun or in tanning beds. Fortunately, all the symptoms went away and Paul recovered from his skin cancer. To this day, Brenda is certain everything that happened that night was because of those children. The cats, the nosebleeds, the dizziness, and the skin cancer, all because they made the mistake of letting those children in their home. I like that story. That was a good one. It's spooky. Well, that's weird. Mary? I mean you no know, harm. We know you're in there. We've seen you. Where are you, Mary? Mary, are you still in there, Mary? You can come out now. My name's Thomas. Hello. Spooky, but don't know if we can say it's really real or not. Never know. I guess we could say. It's up to, up to the universe. What do you think? Anyway, I think we're going to leave that video here. Thank you guys for watching. It means a lot to me. I hope you like these videos, especially these scary stories that we've been doing. Um, if you like these videos, let me know in the comments below. Uh, let me know what kind of videos you want to see. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks for subscribing if you already have. I'll see you in the next video.